You are welcome to the winning platform Tart Winning by Knowledge. The Holy Spirit is a divine facilitator, but not a replacement for the human brain. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding are three keys that propel great success. The grace of God has brought us freedom, divine enablement, and unlimited favor. However, the grace that is abused will be lost. Any knowledge acquired but not applied has no profitable value. This platform, Winning by Knowledge, teaches a balance between personal responsibility and spiritual enablement as keys to unlimited success. You are welcome to this edition of Winning by Knowledge, anchored by Dr. Victor Falak, a pastor, a teacher, and a human resource developer. Empowers can guide you. Father, we thank you again for grace, grace again that has brought us here again. Thank you for grace from every side, grace in our coming in, grace in our going out, grace in our workplaces, grace in our homes, grace upon our family, our children. Thank you for grace. We bless your name and we honor your name alone. Take all the glory and take all the adoration for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Again, we shall be looking at episode number three on the definition of grace we've looked at part one we looked at part two and today we shall be looking at part three so again what is grace grace is that invisible divine force that propels one to success beyond his or her physical strength there are times you know that you succeed in life to an extent that you begin to ask yourself was this me or it was someone else was it me that achieved this you hear people say it you know more often than not yes you prepared for it there's no success that comes you know by accident there's no success that comes by accident then while you plan for the success that i want to get to 0.5 but somehow you found yourself at 0 0.89 or 10 and you ask yourself no Come for a minute i plan to get to 0.5 but somehow i found myself at 0.10 and i cannot explain how i found myself at 0.10 that means that what that means there was an extra divine force that pushed you away from your level of mental academic or human preparation to a point that you did not plan for and that force that you know catapult you that shot you from your own human you know a uh, maximum level of attainment to that level you know that was not your strength that brought you there is called what is called grace so grace is that extra force that when it is you know uh, that when it comes upon a man it makes him extraordinary. I take that again. I said grace is that extra force that comes upon a man and makes that man extraordinary. So that is why you see you can have the ordinary man and you have an extraordinary man. That extraordinary man is that man that is exceptionally different from others. He does things exceptionally different from what others do. And so it is called extraordinary because there was an extra in his life that made that person different from the ordinary people. And so grace is that extra that when added to our own human endeavor, that when added to the human effort, that when added to the human wisdom, that when added to the human ability or mentality, it gives you a result that distinguishes you from others that distinguishes you from your contemporaries, that distinguishes you from the class that you are supposed to be to another class. And that extra force that distinguishes one is referred to as what is referred to as grace. So grace, in another word, you know, is God's provision, you know, that improvises the limitation of mankind. You can do everything that you need to do within your limit. And so you get to a point where 
you now know that this is where my 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 end has come to this is where or how far my brain can go this is how far my academic you know uh thinking my academic thought my academic research can go and within that point you are limited and yet you don't have the ultimate answer that you need then at that point that is where you need divinity to come in where man is limited divinity begins you know the journey from there and so uh, grace is that force you cannot see it grace is that force is called invisible and it is divine because it is from god above and so it is that grace that what that pushes a man beyond the point the man should be to the next point and so that grace is plenty that grace is available that grace is here whatever that you've done if you feel i have arrived I want to tell you that you are not there yet without God. If you feel that, oh, today I have done everything I need to do, either in my own business or either in my own field of endeavor, you know, as an engineer, as a medical doctor or whatever that you do in your profession. If you feel you have attained the best, if it is without God, you are not yet there. If you get yourself connected to God, then that best where you've attained is only the base from where God will begin and take you to the next level where you cannot believe that it can be possible. And so we need to understand this. God said, Jesus said in John chapter 15 and verse number 5, He said, without me you can do nothing. And so whatever that we need to attain in life, yes, we know that when we put in every effort that we need to do, we cannot attain the ultimate in life without God. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse number 6. It said, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And so there's a place where the Holy Ghost takes over. There's a place where you feel you've done it all, or maybe there's a challenge in life in what you're trying to do. And at that point, you need God. You need the Holy Spirit. So if Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. If you read in that John chapter 15, we read, we read 15 verse 5. If you read the preceding verses and the other verses below it, now the Bible was likening man to God. Now he said, I am divine and you are the branches. And he said, without me, you can do nothing. John 15 verse 5. Jesus said, I am divine. I am the tree and you are the branches. And he said, without me, the three, the branch can do nothing. Without me, Jesus, without God in your life, he said, you can do nothing. And if you look at the branch of a tree, you know, it brings forth beautiful flowers. It brings forth very sweet fruits. And so every fruit, you know, that the branches will bring forth, the branches cannot boast of its own. You say, can't you see my beautiful fruits? Can't you see the beautiful flowers that I am bringing forth? For the vine will tell the branch that without me, you can't bring forth the beautiful fruits, the sweet fruits, the beautiful flowers. You cannot bring them forth. What does that mean? That without Jesus, who is the vine, your life has no meaning. Your life has no beauty. Without me, you can do nothing. And in Jesus, we find grace. Said Moses came with the law, but Jesus, the Bible says that what came with grace. So it is the grace of God that beautifies your life. It is the grace of God that beautifies your life, that picks one from the grass to grace, from grass to grace, just like the testimony of David from the dunk hill and made him to sit with prince and he became a king. So that is what the grace of God can do. Stay tuned. Books, books, and books. Great books on leadership, such as Over 70 Reasons Why Leaders Fail, Understanding Leadership Roles, Skills, and Styles, Over 36 Keys on How to Become an Impactful Leader, How to Develop Good Character, Behavior, and Habit, Over 30 Indicators of Leadership Failure and Correctional Measures, and lots more all authored by an exemplary leader, teacher, and resource person, Reverend Dr. Victor Falak. 
pick your copies today at Glamour Bookshop, Magami, Jalingo, or at www.godsgraceandlove.org forward slash books, or call 081-144-222-28. Words of Wisdom for Today the value of an input not converted into output is zero. Extracts from the book, You Need People to Succeed, authored by Rev. Dr. Victor Falak. Welcome back. So the vine will always make provision to the branches. Because if we look at our elementary agric or biology, we understand that word, that it is through the root that the root of the tree or the vine will draw water, will draw mineral resources, and will draw all the things that is required or needed for the growth of the plant. And it goes through the vessels. You know, because plants are also having vessels just like human beings. You hear xylem vessels and uh, uh, other, you know, other channels within the plant that will always make provisions, you know, and all that to the branches. So it is the vine that will bring the food items, the mineral resources, the water that is needed by the branches to produce flowers, to produce fruits. So it must draw all these things through the vine. That's why when you cut off the vine, the Bible says it is good for nothing but for what? Firewood. And so if you are cut off from the grace of God, you are not more attached to the grace of God, then your life is wasted. You are as good as the firewood. You have no value added to the society you have no value added to yourself you are not good for the kingdom of god and you have no value added and so that's why jesus said without me you can do nothing without my grace you can do nothing so we need the grace of god you need the grace of god for you to be able to find your level in life and that's why if you share from the testimony of anna in first samuel chapter 2 and verse number 9 it says, by strength shall no man prevail. By strength shall no man prevail. By strength shall no man prevail. Anything that you do within the strength of a man, there's a limit to which you can go and you cannot break through. But by the grace of God, there is no limit. Anna did everything she could do for many years. She's been in pain. She cried unto God. You know, and all that. And until that extra came upon her life, her life was beautified. Until that extra that is called grace came upon her life, beauty came upon her life. Because Anna was without uh, a baby. She was without children. You know, she would be mocked, you know, by everybody around because she had no baby. But when God visited her, when grace visited her, that beautified her life. And Anna began to sing to God and began to praise God. And out of her testimony, you can hear her say that by strength shall no man prevail. By strength shall no man prevail. And so where the doctors cannot prevail, God will prevail. Where man cannot prevail, God will prevail. Where your pastor cannot prevail, God will prevail. Where your finances, your money, your business cannot prevail, God will prevail. Where your placement in society that is why governors have limitations. Presidents of nations have limitations. But God does not have limitations. So whatever your limitations are, the strongest army in the world, they are limited. But God has no limitation. So when you come in contact with the grace of God, there are no limits. There are no bounds. And he said, by strength shall no man prevail. And so when you, if you have tried and you've tried and you've tried and you've tried by your strength, and everything has failed you. God is calling upon you. Psalms 127 and verse number 1. The Bible says, Except the Lord builds the house. They labor in vain that build it. You've tried, it's not working for you. You've tried in your family, it's not working for you. You've tried to hold it together, it's not working for you. You've tried business, it's not working for you. You've tried to keep your marriage together, it's not working for you. Why can't you give God a trial, my brother, my sister, Give God a trial. Maybe you've done that all on your own. You've tried that all on your own. 
And now you understand from the word of God. He said, without me, you can do nothing. And he said, by strength, you cannot prevail. And he said, the house that you are building, without me, you cannot build it. And so why can't you give God a trial in your life and say today that, Father, I surrender to you. Father, I give it all back to you. Father, I hand it all over to you. Father, I have seen my limitation as a human being. And I know that in you, there is no limitation. Father, help my limitation. Lord, help my limitation. Lord, I hand over my challenge to you. Lord, I give it all over to you. Help me, Lord. You did it for Anna. Do it for me, O God. You did it for David who went through the valley of the shadow of death. Do it for me, O God. Father, you did it for Abraham. You did it for Isaac. You did it for Jacob. Father, do it for me. Father, I believe in your ability. Father, I believe in your strength. From today, Father, I am committed to you. And the cause of my struggle, Father, from today, I'm committed to you and I hand it all over to you. I believe that you can help me. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, you said, Come to me, all ye that, you know, uh, are in need, that we should approach the throne of grace where we can find help in time of need. Father, I have come to seek for help. Help me, O God. Help me, O God. Help me, O God. I commit it all over to you. Help me, O God. Thank you for taking over. Thank you because you've done it for me. And thank you because it is done. And my testimony is here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Brother, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you for following us all through this series. And I want to assure you that as you've handed over your challenge to God, next on the line for a testimony shall be you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Oh, man. Oh, man. Knowledge is the key.